might have used i enumerable, i collection, or i list during programming. Now they are quite interchangeable. But do you sometimes wonder on what is the difference between them? If so, you are on the right video. My name is Brookane and welcome to .NET Mastery. If you like free content related to .NET programming, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Now let's get back to the question that is also asked in many interviews. What is the difference between the three topics that you see right here? To answer that we will first see how they are related to each other. I enumerable is inherited by I collection and I collection is further inherited by I list. Let me start by taking a quick look at I enumerable. I enumerable is a list of items which can be iterated through. It only has one method, get enumerator, which allows to only read values in the list. So with I enumerable, you only get read functionality. Then next we have I collection, which implements I enumerable, but on top of that it adds more features to modify the list using methods like add and remove. Finally, we have the I list which implements I collection and adds an integer indexing to the list. Because of indexing, we have methods like insert and remove where we can specify the index where the element can be added or removed from. That basically summarizes main difference between three entities, but on top of that, there is one more difference. I enumerable has deferred execution, which means it will not go to database to get the call unless the objects are iterated over. Now there are some situation on when it goes to database, but basically when you are using entity framework core, if you only access the DB set, then it will not go to the database to retrieve that. Now that is too much theory. In order to understand it better, let me create an MVC project to see that in action. We will use .NET 7 authentication type. I will go with individual account. Let me create the project. In the project here, we already have application DB context. And if we examine app settings, we have the connection string. Now in our models, let me create a new class. I will call that to do. And inside there, I will add two properties, ID and item. In our application DB context, we will add a DB set for that. And we want to seed our to do table as well. To do that, inside the application DB context, we can add the on model creating and we can seed that with five items. Perfect. Let me add a migration to create that table. Perfect. That is done. Let me hit the command update database and that will create database. Everything looks good here. Now, if I go to controller, home controller, we need to see I enumerable, I collection, and I list. First thing first, we need to access application DB context. So let me add that using dependency injection. After that, in the index action here, if we want to retrieve all the to do from the database and assign that to an I enumerable, we will do it with something like this. If we do the exact same thing, but if we do that for collection and list, this will not work. So if I have I collection and I list here, I will change that to li for list and collection. This one, let me call that en for enumerable. This time you see to do is working, but when we have I collection or I list, we have to add the dot to list here to convert them to a list and then it will work. So I collection and I list will force you to convert that to a list. Only then it will work. After that, let me iterate through all of the collections that we have, all three of them. So I will add three different for each loop. One for collection, one for list item, and one for enumerable. 
With that configured, let me run the application again and go to the console window. We don't care about the web project here. Let's examine the console window here. And perfect. You can see we have two select statement and then it started to log all the collection. We had all the list here. And then when it was logging the enumerable, it did not go to database for the select statement. So for enumerable, because of deferred execution, it executed that select statement and then it logged everything. So perfect. With that, you can see for all three of them, we can have a for each loop and iterate through them. On top of that, I also want to show you something else. If you want to sort them, you can also do order by, or if you want to do a where condition here, that can also be done. All of this condition can be done on all three entities that we have. So everything that we have seen so far can be done on innumerable, collection and list. But now let's take a look at something that cannot be done in an I enumerable. Let's say you have a new to do object that you want to add to the collection list that you have. You can easily add that on collection and list by using the add helper method that is present. But inside the enumerable, we do not have that. So on to do underscore en, if I try add, that does not exist. So if you have to add or remove anything that can only be done on collection or list that we have right here. In order to see the difference between list and collection, if we go down here, when we have to insert an element, it appends at the end here. But what if you want to add at let's say third index? That is only possible in list. So in list we have additional method which is insert and there you have to mention the index at which you want to insert the new object. When you have to remove anything, you can remove any entity at a particular index as well. To see that loud and clear, if we go to I enumerable and press F12, here you can see there is only one method, get enumerator. We close that, go to I collection, press F12 there, you see we have add, clear, contains, copy to and remove. So these are additional methods that are available in the I collection. And you can see it is implementing the I enumerable here. If we take a look at the I list here, it implements I collection and I enumerable. And on top of all the methods in collection and enumerable, there is also index of insert and remove at. So that will give you a better understanding of how all three are related. Now, as you know, in I enumerable, we have deferred execution. That means that query does not get executed on line 20. It will get executed when we iterate inside the for each loop. That can be a blessing or that can be a curse if you are not careful on when you use that. To see that, I have added one example of a bad use case of deferred execution. We know the to do en does not get executed online right here. And as an example, what happens here is when we have first or default, it will go to database. Let me run this and rather show you. So we will add a debugging point and run the application. Perfect. We have the logs here. That is fine. But now let me do this. When I press F10, let me examine what query gets executed. First, we are working on enumerable here. And here we are working on collection. Let me press F10 there. And you can see a new query was executed. Then on first or default, we have one condition. If I press F10 again, you can see another query was executed. If I press that again, you can see a third query was executed. All the three queries were exactly the same. The filter condition that we have or count that we have, it did not add that to the SQL query because we are using enumerable. If this was I queryable, that would be a different thing. But with I enumerable, with deferred execution, every time it is requested, it is going to our database.
But if we take a look at a collection here, it already executed on line 21. So that way, if we press F10, you can see it does not go to database any time. It already had that in memory and based on that, it was performing the operation and giving all the result that were needed. So with deferred execution, you have to be careful. If you do not pay attention, you will have many database calls as you can see here. So now the main question, should you use iList, iCollection or iEnumerable? If I only want to iterate through the objects and there is no requirement for any modification, I would stick to iEnumerable. But if you have to add or remove items, then iCollection is good enough. I would only use iList if the indexing functionality was needed. If you intend on using the iEnumerable, you can always add a dot to list at the end to make sure that it gets executed right away. To show that in example here, where we have the i enumerable, if you add dot to list and run the application again, let me pull up the console window. This time we have three select statements because this i enumerable was executed. Now after that, if we press F10, you will notice that it does not go to database again. So that way, if you use i enumerable and you do not want deferred execution, you can always add dot to list at the end. So I hope you gain knowledge from this video and next time when you have to make a choice, you make the correct one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like the video and leave a comment if you have any question or if you have other topics that you want me to cover.